In this lecture, we're going to see some basic cryptography uh, concepts. Uh, these are applicable to not just distributed systems, but uh, computer systems in general that want to use cryptography. So uh, an important terminology uh, that is used in a lot of security protocols, uh, when, especially when discussing cryptography, is that of principles. And essentially, a principle is a process that carries out operations or actions on behalf of a user. If I say a principle is Alice, essentially that means that uh, the process is acting on behalf of the user Alice. Similarly, Bob, Carol, and Dave are used as other principal names. Uh, and as you can notice, these are uh, starting with the letters of the English alphabet. Eve is typically an uh, evil uh, attacker. Uh, Mallory is typically malicious. And Sarah sometimes is used as the server. So uh, in cryptography, an important uh, concept is a key. A key is essentially a sequence of bytes that is assigned to a user. And the key can be used to lock a given message, any given message. So you can take a message and you can take the key and you can lock the message so that only that key can then be used to unlock that particular locked message. Okay? So if you don't have the key, then you cannot unlock that message. Essentially, this is used to ensure uh, that messages are sent over the network in a way that only authorized individuals who have access to the key can in fact unlock that uh, locked message. Keys are used in very di many different ways and there are different flavors of using keys and there are many different uh, flavors of key-based systems. Uh, the way in which you use a key is you take a message, you apply uh, it, uh, the key on it, and this process is known as encryption. This leads to an encoded message, which is again a sequence of bytes. But essentially the encoded message, the sequence of bytes would not make sense to any attacker who is able to intercept the message on the network, uh, unless the attacker also has access to the key. So only those with access to the key can take the encoded message, the sequence of bytes, use the key on it, and then use a decryption uh, so that you can get back the original message, the original sequence of bytes. If you don't have access to the key and you use a decryption on the encoded message, you're likely to get back uh, some garbage gobbledygook, which is not the original message. So no one can decode uh, an encoded message without having access to the key. So if you have two individuals that have access uh, to a given key, only those two individuals can send messages to each other that are encoded and uh, decoded or encrypted and decrypted uh, using that particular key. Uh, no other attacker or no other individual in the system, even if they're not an attacker, is able to, would be able to listen uh, to messages that are being exchanged by this pair of individuals. So as I mentioned, there are uh, different flavors of cryptography systems. There are two important flavors. They are symmetric and um, asymmetric. Let's discuss the asymmetric first, and then we'll discuss the asymmetric later on. So in symmetric key systems, uh, uh, Alice may be given a key. We'll note, notice that, uh, we'll note that as K sub A or just K A. This key is secret to Alice. Um, there might also be a key that is shared between Alice and Bob that's denoted as KAB, sometimes as KA, B. Uh, this key is known to both Alice as well as Bob, and this can be used to encrypt and decrypt messages that are sent between uh, Alice and Bob. You use the same key, KAB, uh, to uh, both encrypt and decrypt the message. For instance, the data encryption standard uses 56-bit uh, keys, uh, and when you're given a message, um, DES essentially splits up the message into 64-bit blocks, and then it applies the 56-bit key uh, to encrypt each 64-bit block, and the output is then concatenated to the previous block's output, and that's the encoded message. The second flavor of systems is what is known as public-private key systems. Here, each uh, user is given not just one key, but is given a pair of keys. So Alice has both a private key and a public key. Alice's private key, known as KAPRIV, is known only to Alice and no other uh, principal in the system knows Alice's private key. That's why it's private, it's secret. Uh, KAPUB, Alice's public key, is known to everyone in the system. Okay, this is the exact opposite of the private key. Okay? Uh, but the private and public keys are paired with each other in a special way. In the sense that any message that is encrypted with the private key, Alice's private key, can be decrypted only by using Alice's public key. And the reverse, any message that is encrypted using Alice's public key can only be decrypted using Alice's private key. So typically, you generate public-private keys in pairs uh, using some well-known algorithm. Uh, and uh, these, uh, key, these pair of keys are related to each other so that a message encrypted with one key can only be decrypted with the other key and cannot be decrypted by any, with any other key in the system. One of the common ways of generating these uh, public-private key pairs is the RSA or Rivas Shamir Adelman algorithm, which typically uses prime numbers. Uh, so RSA is a well-known standard, for instance, uh, of a public-private key system. A PGP, which some of you might uh, be using already, known as pretty good privacy, is another example of a public-private key system. 
uh, keys need to be several hundreds, in some cases several thousands of uh, uh, not just bits but several uh, uh, bytes long and the longer they are the more secure is the system because the harder it is for attackers to guess what the key is or to break the key. If the key is very small, say the key is just four bytes and essentially the attacker can, can cycle through all the two power four combinations um, uh, or rather say it's four bits, right? Uh, and so the attacker can can cycle through all the two power four combinations of ones and zeros and whichever one leads to a message that seems to make sense would be uh, your key. So the larger your key is, the more computationally difficult it becomes for the attacker uh, to uh, guess what your key is. How does everyone know Alice is a public key? Well, typically a public key infrastructure or known as a PKI is maintained, uh, which maintains the public keys of not just Alice, but all the principles in the system, so anyone can access anyone else's public key. If Alice wants to send a secret message M that uh, Alice only wants Bob to be able to read, essentially Alice uh, encrypts that message with Bob's public key. So you take the message M and you apply Bob's public key KB pub on it and the resulting encoded message is then sent to Bob. This can only be decrypted by using Bob's private key because that's the only key that's paired up with Bob's public key. And so Bob is the only one who has access to that private key, his own private key, and so Bob is the only one who would be able to decrypt this encoded message. Okay, so when you apply Bob's private key, when you uh, apply uh, decryption uh, using Bob's private key on the encoded message, you will get back the original message. This is symmetric too, so you can do the same thing uh, by using the public key first and then the private key next. So if you encode a message with your private key, then um, uh, it can be decrypted using the public key. And this mechanism you'll see later on is used for implementing signatures in the digital world. So when do you use the shared or symmetric uh, key system versus the public private key system? Each of these systems has their pros and cons. Uh, let's discuss the cons. Uh, the shared key system reveals too much information, makes it harder to revoke permissions from individuals. For instance, suppose there is a group of say 10 or 15 individuals that are sharing the same group key so that they can send messages to each other only within the group and no one else outside the group uh, would be able to understand these messages. Now if you want to remove one principal from the group, essentially you need to change the group key for everyone in the group okay? and that's potentially harder. So revocation is a fairly expensive operation in the shared key system. Uh, in public private key uh, systems, um, uh, the disadvantage is that the encryption or decryption operation could be very costly, meaning it consumes time. So if you have a very large message, then encrypting the message might be very expensive. And there are some uh, variants of the public private key systems where encryption is a fast operation, but in those variants, decryption becomes a slow operation. So at least one of these two operations ends up being costly and time consuming. As a result, some systems use a hybrid approach where they might use a public private key system to generate shared keys and then later on uh, use these in uh, use this, this shared key uh, on the messages themselves. In the next lecture, we're going to see how to use the cryptography techniques that we have seen in this lecture to implement the mechanisms that we discussed in the previous lecture.